Hi, and welcome to this episode of John's Model Kit Review. In today's episode, I've got another cool classic kit review for you. It is Hasegawa's 148 scale Nakajima Key 27 Nate in 148 scale. This is Hasegawa kit number J8. This kit has been around for quite some time. I believe it was originally a kit released by a company called Mania, and Hasegawa bought out the molds for this kit after Mania went bankrupt. The only date I could find on this kit was 1988, so I know this kit is at least that old. In this in-process model kit review, we're going to be taking a look at the kit instructions. We're going to be looking at the surface detailing on the exterior of the kit. We'll also take a look at the fit of the major components. We'll look at the detail in the engine bay. We'll also check out the detail on the interior of the kit. We'll look at the transparencies and talk about the fit and clarity of those. We will look at the marking options that come in this kit and the color and marking guides for those. We will also take a look at the kit decals for this kit. And as a bonus in this review, I'm going to be looking at two detail upgrade kits available through True Details. Looking at the instructions, step one has you painting and detailing the engine, and then assembling that in the engine cowling, and then mounting the prop to that assembly. Looking at the engine parts, there's a little bit of flash to be cleaned up, and you want to make sure you have your push rods bent to the correct angles, but the detail here looks really nice. Additionally, when you install this, there is a prominent oil cooler that blocks out most of the detail in the engine compartment, and you can see that in this picture. Moving on, step two has you assembling the cockpit interior, and if we look at the kit parts, you can see the detail on the cockpit floor. You can also see the seat here. There is a minor ejector pin mark on the seat pan. If you add some seat belts to the seat pan, it should cover that up. The engraved detail on the instrument panel is fairly basic, but in reality there is not much to be seen through the very small cockpit opening on a Key 27. I purchased Squadron Products True Details set for the interior of the kit. It is part number 48464. Just about the only thing visible through a Key 27 canopy is a cockpit seat, and I will definitely use that part from this kit. The kit also includes sidewall detail and cockpit floor, but I'll have to decide if I want to use those on the final build. In step three, we're closing up the fuselage halves around the cockpit interior and painting the sidewall on the fuselage halves. Again, for what can be seen through the small opening here, the sidewall detail is certainly going to be adequate with a little bit of detail painting. The fit of the fuselage halves looks really good. You should be able to achieve a very precise fit here. Moving on, in step four, we are attaching the wings to the airframe and the tailplanes to the airframe and a few antennas and other bits. In just setting things together, it looks like you'll be able to achieve a really nice fit here as well. This will require a little bit of dry fitting, and I may glue my upper wings to the fuselage halves first to ensure a really good fit in this area. Dry fitting the tail planes to the fuselage, the fit here looks like it's going to be a putty-free join. In step five, we're assembling the landing gear and attaching that to the airframe. We're also attaching the engine and optional fuel tanks and a few other bits. And the fit and detail on these parts looks great. I don't anticipate any problems here. I also purchased a set of the Key 27 wheels. These come with optional landing gear legs that don't have the lower wheel spats on them. So if you wanted to build something a little bit different from the norm, that's kind of a cool option. In step six, we're mounting the cockpit transparencies and the gun sight and the rollover bar. The transparencies themselves are decent. They fit nicely to the airframe. They're a little bit on the thick side, and I think the clarity would improve with a dip in future floor polish. Moving on to the painting and marking guides, there are two marking options included in this kit. The first one is for a Key 27 Co. of the 84th Flight Company Squadron in Guangdong in 1939. The second marking option is for a Key 27 Atsu of the 102nd Flight Company Squadron in Kakogawa in 1941. 
Unfortunately, in this particular boxing of this kit, these decals have aged and yellowed beyond the point that I feel comfortable using them, so I will need to replace these with a set of aftermarket decals. I have built this kit previously, and I was able to use the decals that came in the kit, so this is hit or miss. I think this is just due to the old age of the particular boxing I have. Looking at the surface detailing on this kit, it is so fine, it's so petite, it has recessed panel lines. You can see the detail on the wing here. There's nice fabric detail on the rudder and on the ailerons. And the finished kit really looks nice under a coat of paint. The fit of this kit overall is really nice. There are a couple areas to watch out for. You want a dry fit before committing to glue. But if you take your time, you should really get a nice result. As I said before, the cockpit opening on a Key 27 is really small, and once you put the transparencies in place, there's not going to be much visible of the cockpit interior. What comes in the box should be adequate for the scale and what is visible, but I'll probably use the True Detail seat here for a little bit of added detail in the cockpit. Due to the low parts count on this kit and the excellent fit and the really nice surface detail, I can recommend this model to modelers of all skill levels. It would be a great first 148 scale build for somebody looking to get into that scale. I've built one of these before and it was just a joy to build. And the surface detail on the kit really shows up any weathering that you do very nicely as well. Well, I'd love to know what you guys think. If any of you have built Hasegawa's Nakajima Ki 27 Nate previously, please feel free to comment in the comment section below. As always, I hope you found this video entertaining and informative, and until next time, model on.